Welcome to Broken Tusk Rising, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play in the Galarian campaign setting. We're playing through the quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. I'm Sean, and I'm playing Andreas Witchborn, the human magus. I'm Jessica, and I'm playing Zancath, the halfling fighter. I'm Jeanette, and I'm playing Jonesy, the human cleric. This is Josh, and I'm playing Corgo, the human barbarian. Last time on Broken Tusk Rising, the new scouts of the Broken Tusk following fought off an attack on Rockloom on the night of the Green Moon. With the help of their new friends, Shaggy Shemvin and Brand, which is short for Frandeman, they defeated two waves of burning mammoth killers with the loss of only three members of the following. Unfortunately, the three who died were Fran's wife and children. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. It is truly a tragedy, and his journey in search of vengeance begins now. <laughs> well, that took a dark turn. Yep, yep. Well, you guys actually said that in the last session, and I didn't notice until I was doing the editing. <laughs> and someone said, and it was Fran's family, there were three people that died. So I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll, we can make that canonical. That's fine. Yeah, I love the power we have over this narrative. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> But before we get to what happens next, let's talk about second level. Sean, tell us about the exciting stuff that Andreas can do now. Uh, second level is uh, your uh, first chance to start expanding on your character's class abilities. You get a class feat and you get a skill feat. Skill feats are generally uh, kind of not as exciting, I would say. I don't really like the skill feats as much because... Sometimes they just feel like they're adding like a plus one to something or telling you you can do something that you thought you would be able to do anyways without the feet. But now now you know it's specifically supposed to be done with a feat. Anyways, um, I picked Titan Wrestler for my skill feat. So that means that I can now uh, wrestle, disarm, shove, and trip larger creatures. So I can go two sizes larger than myself. So I'm medium and I can now uh, grapple huge creatures. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Which I I mean, a mammoth is probably huge, so I'm going to go uh, practice wrestling mammoths later. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then my class feat, I did not pick a mage's feat or a magus feat. Instead, I multi-classed by taking a dedication feat for another class. And for that, I picked witch. Because I feel like it plays into Andreas' backstory that he's from this neighboring country that is ruled by the winter witches. His mother was a witch. And on his journey of being a fighter for the last 50 years, he's realized that he needs to kind of broaden his scope a little bit. And so he's learning these mega spells, but he's also starting to connect with Desna and his, you know, his lineage with his mother. So he's picking up some witch abilities in his uh, patron for his witch abilities, is the knight. Cool. So I'll get some like darkness type stuff later, or some witch spells uh, at a future level. But right now I just get a couple extra cantrips, and I get a familiar. Have you summoned your familiar yet? Uh, well, I, f I was thinking that my familiar may find me at some point during the first day. Ah, okay. They are going to be a porcupet named Bastion. Oh, all right. Okay. Aww. I didn't know that. I would have written that into the... Story thing There's here. There's still time. Maybe I'll I'll just have to let you narrate that. I DM'd it to you so long I mean, ago, but whatever. Oh, did you? <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> When did you send that? Well, I'll, I'll go scroll through our conversation and I'll... Oh my gosh. I have no memory of that. Okay. okay you're a busy man. Wow. I am <laughs> failing at my job. <laughs> to be fair, we don't pay you very much. Uh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Oh boy, you pay me in fun. Aww. Well, Is it like a 3 a.m. one <laughs> yeah. on Discord? Maybe it's 3 a.m. <laughs> Florida time. <laughs> Mike rolls over and Ben is like, Park it, Pit? <laughs> Got Sean again. I had the strangest dream last uh, night. <laughs> September 5th, 2022. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. That's that's recent. I should I have no memory. It's not recent. Yeah, that's that's, that's like ago. two weeks ago. <laughs> that's three weeks ago, but I should remember that. Three weeks um, ago I was when thinking we like, uh, got told that we have to plan for leveling up. Uh, yeah, this is a long time oh ago. Oh my gosh. Wow, I didn't start planning to level up at that point at all. 
I'm not going to emotionally manipulate you or anything, Mike. Uh, it's it's oh. all good. You guys, I think when we leveled up to level two, Sean sat here for like two hours <laughs> just trying like both builds. And the next morning he was like, I'm still thinking about it. I got to go sit down. I have to go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted it to be flavorful and effective at the same time. Oh boy! Okay, for listeners who don't know Pathfinder Second Edition very well, like me, witches focus on debuffs mostly, right? Yeah. So this is going to get me access to uh, the occult spell list. So right now with Magus, I can cast arcane spells, and with the occult spell list, I will. Um, basically I have access to another set of spells that I can prep in my witch spell slots once I get them. Okay. So it's not so much witch abilities, just the witch spell list, which is very cool. Yeah, I, and I could choose to take witch feats on my even levels instead of magus feats as well. Like as we go forward, it's just okay. a little more constrained list down to make it so you're not as cool as a full witch, but you get some of their flavor. Cool. Jonesy, what has changed for you? Oh man, it's really hard to follow up on Sean's... Uh... Awesome backstory, <laughs> full level two details. So well thought out. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for Jonesy, he got another first level spell slot. So now I have three, which is pretty good. And the fun stuff, I took the healing hands class feat, which basically lets me roll D10s instead of D8s when I use any healing spells. Cool. And for skill feats, I spent a really long time looking at them, and I agree with Sean that they're kind of just like, eh. Um, I picked cat fall, so now I can treat falls as 10 feet shorter. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is that because of, like, Jonesy's soft bones? Basically, just- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically morphing back into a child slowly, so getting a little bit more bouncier. Old jelly bones Jonesy, yeah. that's what we called him. <laughs> All right, that's very cool. Corgo. Um, so I fixed my level one error. Um, so I lost Tame Animal because of all the blows to the head. And then Corgo <laughs> remembered how to forage. And so with this level up, Corgo re-remembered and during that last combat Tame Animal. So he picked that back up. And he got 13 hit points, which is a, sounds like a lot to me. I have no idea how much did other people get. Do you re-roll your hit points, or do you take maximum, or how does he usually do that in second edition? You get a set number based on your class each level, plus your constitution. So 13 for Corgo. How many hit points did Andreas get? I'm at total 28 now. Oh, that's still a lot. I thought I was special. I'm at 26. 26. And we'll get to Zancath in a moment. Corgo, any other cool things? That's the cool stuff for now. Okay. And Zancath. Zancath took another level in Fighter. And it is up to 30 HP. Ooh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Dang. Got some other uh, bumps to some save things. Fortitude, reflex, will. And uh, took assisting shot for the feet. Uh, and that just means I can give pluses to other people when they attack, when I shoot with a bow. And also, Zankath took catfall. Oh. Catfall buddies. <laughs> yeah, now now if people get pushed off stuff, we have to hope it's us. <laughs> Harkening back to her uh, youth, where she spent some time in higher places and learned how to take a fall. Cool. Uh, I also need to let you know that you recovered some treasure from the combat. Sean had asked me to make a loot box, and I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you. I, I was going to look it up, but I ran out of time. There are some mundane spears and shields and such. You don't care about that. But there is also one ever-burning torch. Ooh. That's kind of cool. Very cool. I can take that because I don't have dark vision. Okay. And a polished topaz worth 25 gold pieces. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what it's worth. I'm not going to make you roll. Someone will tell you. It's fine. Uh, What's 25 divided by 4? 6.25. But wait, are we getting more gold? Because we can just add it all up. But Mike, what about (laughs) that other gold? Mike, where's the money, Mike? <laughs> nope. No other What gold. happened to our narrative power, Mike? You just, you gave it to us and you took it away. Just took it away. These barbarians don't care about gold. And this, this topaz is just a, a little token of somebody that this person killed or something. I don't know. They've got a, a very difficult to divvy up topaz. <laughs> uh, I have crafting, so I cut it in four. 
<laughs> and I pass uh, six point two five gold worth of gems to each person. Jonesy eats his. <laughs> <laughs> it, it loses its value when you cut it. You each get six gold pieces worth of topaz. <laughs> See, look what you just did. <laughs> and you also have six applications of tinder twig. Tinder, tinder twig. twig. Is that for fires? Yeah, I think so. Tinder twig is an alchemical substance on the end of a wooden stick. It's basically a match, right? That is, ignites when struck against a rough surface. Makes it easier to start a fire. I don't want them. You guys can have them. Corco, you can have them. There were no cigarettes with these? It was just nope. matches? <laughs> Lame. I mean, don't smoke, everyone. Corgo, I forgot to have uh, someone roll to heal the uh, harm that you have suffered. I can heal him. Oh, well, you can. I was going to say Nacta probably healed him after the battle at Rock Loom, and she's going to give you 11 hit points back. Are you still down a lot? Nope. Fully healed. Okay. Looking good. And that's all the preamble... Anything anybody needs to ask about or arrange or anything? Everybody good to go? I think that's it. Oh, wait. What did Whippa name her kids? Oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> oh, yeah. All okay. three of them. <laughs> but wait, nobody else talked about their mother in their backstories as to why they leveled up <laughs> to level two. Do we want to get into that, maybe? Huh. No. It's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That fails. Moving on. <laughs> I feel called out. <laughs> I'll get to whip his children in a moment. Well, maybe not a moment. We'll see. She she named them after three of us. One of us got really slighted. <laughs> all right, back to the story. The rest of the evening is a blur for all of you. The following packed up immediately and drove the herd east. Thanks to your preparations, it did not take long and no further attacks occurred the next day. The first of Gozerin. The rumor among the following is that the attackers were just over-eager scouts for the burning mammoth following. You don't have much time to think about this, however. There are wounded to care for, including Corgo, and animals to manage, and foraging that must be done. Still, even with your minds and bodies occupied, there are some things that you can't stop thinking about. Pocano has disappeared. No one saw him after he ran off during the attack. Some are concerned about him, and others are glad he's gone. No one can be spared trying to track him down. The more important news, however, is that Grandfather Ewa has grown ill. Maybe the stress of the attack was too much for the old man, you know that he's being carried on a litter during the day, and he rests in his tent at night, attended by members of House Falcon. Others wait outside the tent for news. You are all kept busy in your role as scouts. The house leaders all agree that the following needs to head away from the burning mammoths as quickly as possible. Over the route that is known to the Broken Tusk following as the Seorn route, and that means going east. That brings us to the Hexploration Rules. Yay! Yay! <laughs> what the listeners have been waiting for. Yes. This is a hex-based campaign, which means that a significant part of the campaign revolves around movement across an overland map divided into hexagons. This kind of campaign goes all the way back to the early days of Dungeons and & Dragons, and Pathfinder 2nd Edition has rules for how much the player characters can do in a day, what kind of things they can do, how fast they can travel, and so on. This initial dip into exploration is simplified, however, because you really only need to do one thing. Get away from the burning mammoths as quickly as you can. So let's go over how exploration works. You get one exploration activity per day. Now, if you had a different movement rate or different circumstances, you could maybe get more than one. But currently, you get one per day. Normally, you could use it to travel or reconnoiter as a group. Or you could perform individual activities such as fortifying a camp or mapping an area. In your current situation, the leaders of the houses urge you to simply lead the following along the Seorn route to the east, as it is a well-known route and it should allow for faster travel. That means you'll be using only the travel activity to move into a hex, and only the reconnoiter activity to make sure the hex is safe for the following to enter. You won't need to worry about any other kinds of activities, just travel and reconnoiter. The leaders of the houses are concerned about ambushes taking place along the path. Moving into a hex of open terrain, like the plains around your following, uses one travel activity. Difficult terrain, such as forest or hills, requires two travel activities. That means it will take you two days to move into a hex with difficult terrain. You cannot move through mountainous terrain with the following. Although, of course, the mountainous terrain is quite far away from you right now. Using the reconnoiter activity takes the same number of days as the travel activity. So if you want to reconnoiter a difficult terrain hex, it would take you two days. 
So for example, today you're going to move to one of the hexes to the east. It will take one exploration activity to travel, and then another to reconnoiter the hex before the following can catch up with you. Your following, that is. That means it will take two days to fully move the entire following to that hex. Then you'll move on to the next hex and reconnoiter it, and so on. Let's start with your first travel action. You've got two hexes to the east of your current position, one to the northeast and one to the southeast. Into which hex would you like to travel? On the map, you've got this burning mammoth token to our north. Is that... Uh... That is the location of the burning mammoth following. Okay. Question. Uh, do we know about, like, we, the pe- the players, can see the terrain that is ahead of us? Yes, good point. So this route is well known to the Broken Tusk following. You know this area. You can see the entire map. You know all of this. There's no fog of war. You also know approximately where the Burning Mammoth following is. So, yeah, there are no secrets or hidden things here. At least, not that... The terrain uh, is not surprising to that's us. That's right. We know rivers. We know forest. Okay. The yeah. route is not surprising. Yeah, you know everything you can see on this map here. So we see that to the east of us, a couple days to the east of us, there's a river that feeds to a lake that's even a couple days further than that, then a forest, yep, and some more open terrain that leads to, into this mountain range that looks like we're going to have to book it for. Yep. I feel like we should probably try and get away from the Burning Mammoths, which would mean southeast. What do you guys think? I yep. agree. Yep. Okay. Oh, where's my map here? There it is. So those brown hexes are supposed to be hills. Okay. The green hexes are plains, the forests are obvious, uh, and then there are mountains to the east. So you're going to head to the southeast to gain some distance between you and the burning mammoth following. Are hills difficult terrain or no? They are, yes. Okay. You travel across the plain with the broken tusk following a bit behind you. After a full day of traveling, you've moved into the next hex. It appears to be empty, featureless grassland with large patches of melting snow. You make your camp, prepare to reconnoiter the area the next day. And there's nothing else exciting that happens on that particular move into the next hex. Are there, are you doing like random encounter rolls? There is a random encounter setup. There's just no random encounter has happened in this move. Gotcha. Okay. So it's connected to squares, hexes. Uh, the random encounters. The random encounters, yes. They're, they, okay. So the random encounters may occur when you enter a hex that has something in it that you can't see on the map. It may occur because I roll something. It may occur because you've moved through a certain number of hexes, a particular type of terrain. Right. There are different reasons why random encounters might happen. From your perspective, they're random. That makes a lot of sense. Sure. <laughs> the next morning, early in the morning... A runner from the Broken Tusks finds your temporary camp. He comes trotting up the path behind you, and it is the hero of Rockloom, Frand. Frand! Frand, how are you? Are you all right? He has run the whole way, but he shows no signs of being out of breath. Hello, friends. I have important news from the main camp, and yes, I am all right, all things considered. (laughs) The burning mammoths are on the move as well, but they're disorganized. Maybe we surprised them when we killed their scouts. When you killed the scouts, you mean? Well, yes. When I killed most of their scouts, and you were vitally helpful. Well, I appreciate appreciate the bluff. Always so humble. He looks at Jonesy. I also bring news from Falcon House. I'm, I'm sorry, Jonesy. Awa is not going to make it. What? I don't know who will be taking over for your house as the new Mammoth Lord. Three members of the house keep a constant vigil by his deathbed. They even have song singers memorizing whatever tales he can impart before he goes. Awa has asked all of you to come as soon as possible. You'd you'd better hurry. <coughs> I'm going to scout the area ahead myself, and then once everything is under control, I'll head off on my own personal quest of vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> he stares off toward the northwest. Rand, don't be ridiculous. You can't take them all on yourself. Team up with us. Become our our fifth member. And then and then when we're all, you know, we got like cool MacGuffins and powers, we can go back and we can crush them together. We can avenge your beautiful wife and your barely competent children. <laughs> <laughs> he puts his hand on your shoulder and says, <laughs> That is very kind of you, my friend. However, 
I have my own journey that I must pursue, just as you have yours. I wish you good luck. Fred. Yes? Make make sure to at least be wise in your quest. What does that mean? Just don't make stupid decisions. Me? I'm just saying you're about to go off and fight a bunch of people that could certainly kill you if you weren't smart about it. So just be oh, be careful. You thought I was just going to charge into their camp and attack them? That's kind of what I'm telling you not to do. Oh, well, okay. Yes. Don't worry about that. Friend has a plan. Excellent. And Kathy, you're, you're embarrassing us. Be cool around, friend. <laughs> <laughs> It felt like somebody needed to say it, but you're right, I'm sorry. (laughs) Man knows what he's doing, just look at his biceps. (laughs) He does have stunning biceps. Amazing. Friend trots off to the east. Friend, (laughs) no! Jonesy falls to his knees and starts crying. (laughs) Andreas uh, pats Jonesy on the shoulder. It's all right, Jonesy. We'll say a prayer for him. Desna and Serenrae will keep watch over him. We will see him again, I'm sure of it. I will never forget that man. (laughs) Gorgo looks at his biceps and just has a little pouty face. (laughs) Do you want to go back to the following? Do you want to ignore his request? What do you want to do? Well, I'm part of Falcon House. It seems as though I, I must return. I'm awaiting other thoughts, though. If the following is coming here tomorrow, uh, perhaps that is too late, but it would take us almost as much time to travel back to them as it would for them to travel to us. So perhaps it would be wisest to wait here for them to join us. You do know that the following is actually not far behind you. You should think of them as being like right on the border of the hex that you've entered. So when you stop, they keep moving forward a bit and gradually catch up with you, but they're not quite to where you are. Oh, I thought that they weren't moving because Iowa was so sick. They have stopped for the day now, yes. Yeah, they've stopped for the day now. So they're they're not quite a full hex behind you, but they are a little bit behind you, and they have stopped for the rest of the day. So we could go back without losing, game-wise, without losing progress. Right, right, without losing progress. They're just a few hours behind you. Tis tis your duty, Jonesy, as... uh the mammoth lord of your house. We should we should all go back, pay our respects. Perhaps he has something more to tell us about the frozen flame. Yes, I agree. If that's if we know that that's what it's called already. <laughs> uh, you don't, but that's okay. The primordial flame. <laughs> that's it. Oh my god, what's Perhaps that? he has something to tell us about the primordial flame and who stole it. I remember he was very cryptic about it, and we should probably, we should probably you know, say aye before he, before he passes on. Agreed. All right. So you run back to the following, quickly retracing your steps. Camp is quiet as you approach. Even the mammoths seem to know that something momentous is about to happen. You approach Awa's humble tent, finding a crowd of mourners outside, and you hear chanting coming from inside. The crowd parts for you to enter. You can hear the chant from inside, By Fendara's blood you were born, into Blood Mother's womb you return, repeated over and over. You find Argakoa, the song singer, Mammoth Lord of Otter House, inside as well. She repeats the same chant and gestures for you to sit by the bed of the diminished man. Ewa now looks small and frail. He smiles slightly as you enter. Young tusks, he whispers, his voice as brittle and ancient as his deeply lined face. It is time that I told you the rest of the legend. Of the primordial flame. Good call, Andreas. Bottle cap. <laughs> You're a point. Yeah. You're a point for Andreas for correctly predicting that it is essential for you to return so you can get this bit of story. <laughs> yes. I have already told song singer Argakoa. Her mind is like soft wood. She carves my ramblings into stories so she can help you on your quest <gasps> when I am gone Argakoa gently places a hand on Ewa's shoulder the old man tells his tale in halting gasps <gasps> my mother Sitka <gasps> she and the others the ones who would become the first broken tusks 
<gasps> they took the flame to Red Cat Cave. It is <gasps> east of here in the mountains. They hid it in the cave under the protection of a noble beast named <gasps> Stiarstick. Every year after, we would go to make sure it was safe. <gasps> but it was not. A handful of winters and then it was gone. My mother saw with her own eyes the terrible, tormented spirit of Siarstick. The empty dais where the flame once rested. <gasps> Siarstick's enraged spirit attacked her, and she fled with the other tusks. We <gasps> never went back. Go there. We do not know who took the flame. Siarstick, angry as he is, might still remember. <gasps> Claim his spirit and find the flame. We have waited far too long. It is time to use the primordial flame to reunite our people. He reaches out a trembling hand and puts it on top of Zanketh's hand. You must succeed. Exhausted from this effort, Awa goes limp, his hand falling to the ground. He closes his eyes, and his breathing slows, and then stops. Argakoa bows her head, and then stands up. I will tell the heads of the houses. In the ancient past, we cremated our dead with the primordial flame. We cannot do that, and we cannot allow Awa's body to fall into the hands of the bloodthirsty monsters behind us. We will burn it in the bonfire and scatter what is left tonight. I encourage you to attend the ceremony, but I know that it is important to keep pushing forward as the vanguard of the following. I will pass on Awa's wishes regarding Red Cat Cave to the other mammoth lords, Letsua, Murthig, and Nakta. She stands and leaves. The chanting song singers gently pick up Awa's cot and carry it outside, then down a hill toward the camp's bonfire. So is... Is Argakoa the new leader of the, the of the clan? The house? Falcon House? Are you asking me? No, she's oh. not Falcon House. Uh, you don't actually know who the leader would be now that Ao is gone. I don't even know how this happened to me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you were drafted. Remember the team thing? Yeah. Somehow. But I, I don't know. Sorry, this creature that was in the cave, what's its name? The spirit? Siarstik. S-Y-A-R-S-T-I-K. And it was it was destroyed, and now we're searching for its spirit? That's what Awa says. Sounds you know. like, yeah, it was a tormented and enraged spirit Okay. that attacked the Baroque Tusk when they came to check stuff out. Okay. You can stay for the funeral. You know that the actual burning of the body in the camp's fire would probably take place immediately. I don't see why we wouldn't. We are not going to roleplay out the funeral. Oh, too bad. Yeah, sorry. I did a funeral recently. I don't want to do another one. And uh, we're not going to uh, roleplay all that out. And I'm just going to summarize what happens, if that's okay with everyone. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Many people at the funeral tell fond stories of Awa, most of them remembering kindness rather than valor. You are invited to tell your own stories as well. Maybe you have some stories to share. Whippa announces that she is naming one of her sons Ewa and her daughter Sidka after Ewa's mother. Now, what's interesting is the book doesn't tell me what she names the other son. It only points out that she names one son Ewa, her daughter Sidka. I don't know what the other son's name is. Andreas. Andreas, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Whippa also announces that she is taking the name Whippakoa, signifying that she has given birth and is now a mother of children. At the end of the ceremony, Argakoa announces, Tusks, we are going on a great journey. We will follow the Seorn route as before, but our scouts will scout the way and seek out a power once lost to us. 
After much discussion, the Mammoth Lords have decided to try to find the Red Cat Cave. Scouts, we are counting on you. It may take some time to find the cave once we get to the Tusk Mountains. If you cannot find it, we will continue on the Seorn route up the North Trail by the mountains. We should make the usual stops at Gleaming Sun Lake and the Grandparents. You know that the Grandparents are two mountains with a high plain between them. Sounds good. Okay. So, sh- would you like to return to the reconnoitering? Yeah, so we uh, yeah, mission have to map out each square as we go, right? So, Yep. So you're back to your hex that you were exploring. Uh, Frand returns briefly to tell you that that hex appears clear, and you can, with your time spent at the camp and your time that you have remaining to finish reconnoitering this hex, you haven't lost any time. Okay? And you may now choose which hex you want to move into for the next day. And really quick before we do that, is there any talk of Pacano? Like, did anybody have any sense into where he might have gone? Or No one has any clue where Pacano has gone. Okay. Back when we were at the World Wound, occasionally... Cowardly warriors would desert and join the demons. And I worry that Bacano, he he was off in the days before the attack, acting strangely. I wonder if he's gone over to the enemy. He has always been a willful, pride-filled boy, and I fear that Eowa, refusing to name him as his successor, pushed him to making terrible decisions. At least Frand will teach him a lesson. (laughs) Should we uh, go through these hills, or should we sweep north around them through the river? What do you guys think? We do have to get to the lake, apparently. I worry going north will take us closer to the Burning Mammoths. You do know that going south through the hills will slow you down. But you're also correct that in your current position, if you were to go northeast and stay to the faster plains route, that the burning mammoths would be within one movement of the hex right next to you again. You have to decide which route you would like to go. Perhaps it's worth it to avoid the extra time. Taking the risk might be worth it. I think we go southeast today and then northeast uh, the day after. All right, that northeast move will put you into the hills. Yeah. Just want to make sure you're aware of that. We can we could just spend one day in the hills instead of multiple, but we still manage to keep a bit of a distance. Well, it would take you two days just to get into the hills. Well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> because it's difficult terrain. It would take you yeah. two days to enter the hills, two days to reconnoiter. So so it would be four, day, four days to get to this instead of three days to get to it, but we... Oh, screw it. Let's go north. But in the time that it would take us to get over the hill, the burning man, mammoths could have ca- caught up with us. They're going to do that either way. I mean, we're going to take... So I say we go north and take the, the shorter right. distance. Yeah. Okay. Is that what everyone's... I didn't think about how to resolve this. How do we resolve discussions of which route you're going to take? Shaggy gets the tiebreaker. Shaggy is staying with the camp at the <gasps> moment. Oh. <sighs> With Frand on his personal quest, and with the four of you out scouting, they want someone as powerful as Shaggy to stick around to help defend I the knew camp. I would steal him. From I me. guess I can't argue with that. Andreas <laughs> pulls a porcupine out from under his jacket. Then Bastion will get the tiebreaker, and he puts <laughs> puts Bastion down <laughs> onto the ground. Don't worry. Uh, this is actually really cool. He Wait, can... sir. Yes. I believe that's not a pet. What do you mean? Did you did you take that from the, the porcupine mother? No, I, I think you might have. She, she, <laughs> she, are you sure, sir? Yeah, he he found me. It does. It, it does. It it does seem slightly familiar yes. to me. <laughs> so you can just take that. No, it's completely different. I checked. <laughs> right, well, turn, could you flip him upside down so I could see? He picks him up and like shows you uh, the porcupine's belly, and it has a blue birthmark in the shape of butterfly wings on its belly. What? Oh, that's awesome. How did you how did you get it to stay still for a tattoo, sir? 
<laughs> well, they're already quite used to needles, so oh. <laughs> it's a simple, simple matter. But um, this is Bastion. Do you want to roll a 50-50 chance to see which way Bastion goes? Oh, Bastion's quite intelligent. He's going to pick the best way, which is the way that I voted. So we're going to the north. <laughs> You're going to the north? Is that what you yes. said? <laughs> You're going to the north. Is that the is that the decision? You're going northeast? I mean, I, I agreed with you a while ago <laughs> about north. <laughs> I also agree. It, it sounds good. As long as I can pet the porky pet. Of course you can. And Jonesy tries to pat its head. How does it react to being petted? Bastion's into it. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Cool. I, uh, I suppose I should maybe mention that uh, during my morning preparations, I can change the uh, Bastion's abilities. He gets two familiar abilities. My default ones are touch telepathy. So as long as I'm touching him, he can communicate to me. Hmm. What does his voice sound like when he talks to you? I could choose to give him speech. But uh, but for now, he's just got touch telepathy, so he can speak to me. Oh, okay. And uh, he's also got an ability that allows me to refresh my focus point spells. Ooh. Cool. cool. Wow. What does he uh, sound like when you guys talk telepathically? I don't know. Um, Mike, what does he sound like? <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I don't know. Am I, am I going to be representing uh, the... I wasn't sure if you're going to be talking to yourself <laughs> as the familiar... I think Sean has to do it. Oh, I mean, he I did this. I, I mean, it's, his fault. <laughs> it's already hard enough to role play as one guy. I got a strong uh, uh, Southern woman that I can throw at yeah, it, yeah. but that might get confusing. Uh, yeah. yeah. I feel like you've been subjected to role playing as people's animal companions enough. I don't want to do that to you again. <laughs> when you're good at it you're good at it you gotta do it it's all happening in my mind anyway so it wouldn't come out you wouldn't hear it on a microphone so oh okay all right if, he, if i give him speech then i'll then i'll uh i'll talk with you about it i think jessica <laughs> just randomly start talking and they you know and then you have to respond <laughs> even better we'll figure out what it sounds like maybe when you actually talk to it if that comes up for the moment you have actually moved to the northeast and that puts you one hex closer to the river and consumes your travel action for the day. And the burning mammoth following does not move. Nice. Frand is wreaking havoc. Yeah. I think that's right. Hold on. One, two, three. Oh, no, actually, they do move. <laughs> All right. Oh, so Frand is dead. You spent three exploration activities. After you spent three exploration activities, they have now moved once. All right. Okay. Scary. Just want you to note that. Okay. They have moved one once. They have moved one hex closer to you and the broken tusk following. You are now in your second hexagon, and you need to spend a reconnoiter activity. Do we need to? You have been asked to do that okay. to make sure the path is safe. Okay. And the adventure path explicitly says that you are supposed to do that. Well, that's. <laughs> If we've been ordered to by Arco or whoever, then that's what we're doing. Okay. So you are now in your second hex, and you are real close. You're real close to that river. So you begin the next day, which is, let's see, we're now on to... Day four. You are now on the fourth of Gozrin. You begin scouting the area, checking for signs of burning mammoth traps or ambushes or any other dangers that might be lurking around. The grasslands are calm, with no signs of the raging horde of scarred warriors. In the afternoon, you are exploring a low plateau, barely rising above the plain, and on this plateau you see a grazing hadrosaurid. Hadra... Soren? A hadrosaurid is a duck-billed dinosaur. Oh. <laughs> Ducky. It is slowly stomping its way across the plain, next to a dense copse of wood, poking around in some mud puddles and chewing on grasses. It's slowly meandering south toward you, and it doesn't seem particularly concerned about you or anything else. Um, what do we know about these things, you guys? Well, you could make a check, a nature check. I know up to 21 nature checks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you know that it is a huge animal. It is a dinosaur. They are herbivores. They're dangerous if you make them angry, but they're typically pretty laid back. 
Perhaps we could just startle it off and scare it in an opposite direction. Do they travel in herds or anything, Jonesy? They do often travel in herds. This one seems to be on its own. Yes, observing it from this distance, it appears to be alone. Uh, is there a way that we have set up where we can communicate with the following? Like, we can put some rocks or something that mean caution or whatever? I think that's reasonable, don't you? I think that's reasonable that you could put up some sort of rock pile or a, a torch or something that suggests this area should be avoided. I think that seems reasonable. Maybe we could use more of those children to sort of hand away people away. <laughs> <laughs> Those are very handy children. <laughs> yes, children in little police officers' uniforms. Yeah. I was just going to say, I'm not suggesting we do that. I'm just saying that could be an option. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm sure if we laid out a bunch of rocks. I, I think that's reasonable to assume you have such a, a method to signal to the following. It just spells N O. That's it. <laughs> so this, this is a problem because this is a dangerous thing. And if they were to come upon it. Like could a whole be. group of them might startle it or something. Yeah. It could be dangerous. It could be an animal that you might be able to add to the following if you could succeed on a check. It could be just something that's just stomping around. It really doesn't seem interested in you. It's not like you're hiding. Everyone make a perception check. As you stand here and survey the area. Um, Andreas got a 17. Corgo. 13. Jonesy. 15. Zancath. 19. <laughs> 19. All right, so you all did pretty well. I like that they all went up by twos. You look over the area, and you see in the middle of this area a dell, a, a small depression in the middle of this plateau, and next to it you see a snare has been placed. And the snare is made of several sharpened stakes, each over a foot long, clustered together and pointing upward. Any creature of medium or smaller size could easily avoid this, but something as big as that hadrosaur could easily fail to spot it and step on it. The hadrosaur is not moving quickly, but you can tell that it's eventually going to wander maybe near the trap, and it might step on it. It might lash out, but it would probably just try to run away. What would it take to disarm that, Zankath, do you think? I don't know. What, what do I think it would take to disarm that? <laughs> I have no idea. Let me look. Also, I've seen traps that were set by the burning mammoths. Does this seem to be of their make? Ooh, that's a fun question. Why don't you make a society check? Fifteen. This doesn't look like a burning mammoth trap. It doesn't look like a mammoth following trap at all. But at least the way it's made. Okay. It's not so much that they wouldn't make a trap of this kind, it's just that the style of this one's construction looks different. Yeah. I, I, looked, in my, I looked in my snare maker's handbook, and it looks like a thievery. Uh, someone who's skilled in, and as a thief would have the best chance of disarming that trap. Yeah, so where is the... The snare goodness, should have a crafting don't. DC, or a disabled DC, and it's a thievery skill check. Yeah, I'm looking at it in the AP, and it has none of that. It only has a, a save to avoid it. It doesn't have anything about disarming it. Do you generally be the same DC? Oh, okay. So the same DC is, as avoiding it is the DC of disarming it. I think so. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's marked mechanical and snare and trap. I would suggest you all uh, stay back here in case I am unsuccessful, but I'll give it a try. All right. So Zankath is going to move toward the trap? Yes. So Zankath begins moving toward the trap. Move yourself about f 15 feet. Oh, okay. Yep, there you go. All right, so you move about 15 feet, and suddenly a voice calls out, Stop there, big ones. Maybe you steal small snare, but it's not your place. It's ours. Our snares. Now, right now is ours, and bigger one is dinner. Go or die, or go and die. Actually, if dying, stay here for more dinner. <laughs> and then you hear some arguing taking place in a guttural language. The hadrosaurid lifts its head and looks in your direction, but it doesn't seem concerned and puts it back down. Do I, do I see where this voice is coming from? Uh, make another perception check. Nope, that's a 13. Somewhere to the north of you. Okay. And did the rest of us hear it, or just Sandcast? Yep, you can all hear that. Andreas moves forward. 
Doesn't like the tone of this man's voice. All right, so you hear the voice again. It says, actually, probably easier to just eat you now. <sighs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> of course. Sure. Andreas got a 22. Uh, Zagath got a 24. Ooh. Ooh. 12 for Corgo. Jonesy got a 14. Zenkath, it is your turn. You don't see anything yet. I'm going to draw my bow. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take uh, the stance, a point blank shot stance. Is that the right terminology? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going to do that. Is there a way to hold an action in this? Yeah, you can spend two actions to ready an action. Okay, it's too late to do that then. Oh. Uh, I've already used both two, so... Uh, oh, I'm just... I didn't know Point Blake Shaw took two actions. No, okay. it takes one, but I... Drawing uh, is one. Drawing. Oh, drawing right, okay, is one. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So this area here... Yeah, that... Uh, mm -hmm. That it, the place in the middle by the trap. That's a little like a divot, a little low area, like a dent in the ground. So not could I, being a short person, could I get in there and maybe have some cover? Sure. Okay, fine. I'm just gonna. I find them, don't I? Yeah, there they are. <laughs> yeah. You oh. hop into this little ditch, Ooh. and there are three hideous little creatures in here. Oh, no. Delightfully ugly. <laughs> oh, they're awful. <laughs> I don't have pictures for the others, but they're just as ugly. I found them! So Zankath runs <laughs> in, <laughs> and hops in the ditch, and you immediately see that there are three ugly creatures in here. One small creature, two tiny ones. Cool. And they're in this ditch with you. Cool, cool, cool. And that's the end of Zankath's turn. Andreas, it's your turn. Uh, Andreas will draw his meteor hammer and will move forward. Uh, I'm going to go right beside Zankath. So I've moved 25 feet up. And I will attack the tiny creature nearest to me. I wonder if I can find a good picture of them. Hold on. Let me see if I can find a good picture. Oh, you know what? Maybe, uh, yeah, depending on... Even if I can get a physical description, and then Andreas will decide if he might roll a, a check, actually. There we go. It looks like that. Ooh. The little ones look like this oh thing. God. It's no. kind of like a chihuahua. Looks like a, ch kind a of, bipedal yeah. chihuahua. With a dagger. With a dagger that's covered in blood. Yikes. Yeah. Doesn't look friendly. Could I do a recall knowledge on this little creature? Why don't you give me a nature check? All right. Uh, that's a 14. Just enough. Oh, yes. Oh, you nice. know that this is a Pugwampi. <laughs> and it, it's a kind of gremlin, which means it's also fey. Okay. And they're nasty and mean-spirited little critters. You don't want to mess with these guys. They will play really cruel cool pranks on you. They'll break your stuff. So Andreas will say to them as he recognizes these Pugwampis, you know, in polite society, eating someone is not really considered a prank. And that's the end of my turn. All right. And that brings us now to the other creature, the one that's not a Pugwampi, the one that's a little bigger. This is some other kind of gremlin, you're pretty sure. Let's see, I have lots of cool things that I can do. I like that. Let's cast that spell. <laughs> Love Don't the build like that. Up. Area, four contiguous five foot squares. So I'm gonna cast that. And let's draw oh, okay. that effect. That's not as horrifying as I thought. Maybe. Oh, so much text. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed by this text. What? Is there a lot of text on the screen? Uh, no. Yes. And just this, this spell <laughs> text. Really. He's, he's oh, overwhelmed. Okay. I need Andreas and Zankath to make reflex saves or use acrobatics checks. Ooh, what's better for me? Definitely a reflex save. Ooh. I got a natural one for a total of 11. Well, if you roll a one, it gets one category worse, which makes it a crit fail. Andreas rolled a 19. Andreas saves. Unfortunately, Zankath slips and falls. What does it say on a critical failure? Uh, it doesn't say. It just says on a failure. Just prone. Just prone. Okay. So, Zankath, you are now prone. Okay. And with the creature's last action... It giggles. <laughs> and 
takes advantage of the fact that you're prone. Rude. To do a sneak attack. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, what should I do? Should I do a bite or should I do a claw? Let's do a bite. So it's going to try to hit you with a bite, and it rolls a total of Ooh. 26. That is a hit, but not a critical. Oh, let's see. Oh, I got to roll a whole bunch of damage here. Let's start with the regular damage, the piercing damage. Oh, my gosh. Just two points of piercing damage. You'll live forever. But you're prone, so you also take... What? <laughs> Well, that's not fair. <laughs> I rolled a one and a one. I rolled a one on 1d8 and a one on 1d10. Now that's what we call a prank back home. <laughs> <laughs> not funny. I'm all greasy and I'm just kind of rolling around and it's hard to get hold of. <laughs> Sit still. It's like Jason Statham in the transporter. <laughs> <laughs> so you take a total of three hit points of damage from this attack that was designed to do up to... Um, 20 points of damage if you're prone. So, yeah, that did not work out for you. Um, I have a question about shields. Yes. So I have a shield. It is a tri- uh, contributing to my AC currently. It mm. only contributes to your AC if you take the raise a shield action on your turn. That's right. Okay. Well, is it contributing to my... No. I don't, I don't know. No, because you didn't... It's not current. You don't have the raise a shield condition. I didn't do the thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Never mind then. That was the correct AC, and it was not a critical. Because if Excellent. I didn't, if I was one lower, it would have been a crit. Yep. Okay. So that's the end of the creature's turn. And then one of the Pugwumpies gets to go. And it's the one next to Andreas. And it's going to attack the person who is prone on the ground. Uh, so let's see. It doesn't have all the cool abilities, though. Oh, but I forgot something. Oh, gosh, this could be retroactively bad. Oh, yeah, I need both of you to make will saves, both Andreas and Zancath. Oh, no. That's right. Will is my second best save. Not mine. I rolled a 12. Andreas fails. I rolled a 20. Okay, now here's the bad news. You have to roll again and take the worst of the two results. Oh. Both of us? Both of you. What? I don't like that. A nine. Okay, <laughs> that still fails. Oh my gosh. 20 is still my lowest. 20 is your lowest. So Zancath is unaffected. However, poor Andreas is now afflicted with unluckiness. Oh, come on. Ooh, no. Not liking that. You must now roll twice and take the worst result on all checks. Oh, I know. That's so until bad. Until I tell you to stop. That's not lucky. You know, Sean, I find this kind of ironically funny. Will is my worst and your best, and Reflex is my worst and, I don't know, probably not your best, and we yeah. succeeded on yeah. the others. Yeah. Is this a mental effect? It is. Mm. It is mental misfortune and primal. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I, I have a, I have an ancestry feat for being human. I don't, it probably doesn't apply. My powerful ego makes it harder for others to order me around. If I roll a success on a saving throw against a mental effect, it's a critical success instead. And if I... F- oh, no, that, never mind. That's only if I roll a success. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, so I'm afraid you're afflicted with unluckiness. Zancath, you are now immune to this for 24 hours, so you don't have to roll again for the other creature, and neither does Andreas because he's already failed. Okay, so now that wasn't even an action. That was just a passive effect. Now this creature steps up to poor Zancath and attempts to hit her with a short sword. That is an 18 to hit. It's just... Okay. Uh, damage. What? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, Mike. Really? Well, you do have a minus three to that attack, to the damage on that attack. I know, but... (sighs) You suffer another one point of damage. (laughs) I'm just, I'm all slippery. (laughs) Oh. Man, okay. All right, fine. Fine. (laughs) It's fine. What should I do with my next action? Uh, I guess I could try another hit. It won't succeed. I don't have really any other cool abilities that I can use on you. Gosh. Yeah, there's really not much we can do here. 
I guess uh, anything cool I could do with a deception check? Probably not, huh? Uh, depending on what their <laughs> skills are, and this is not me helping the party at all, but depending on what their skills are, they could be intimidating, fainting. They could be yeah, grappling. Have, I guess I guess faint might work. I mean, maybe they could just roll a knowledge check to find out what we are. Faint. <laughs> <laughs> faint. <laughs> faint would make me or the target uh, potentially fat, flat-footed. It's a deception against the target's perception DC. All right. Can anybody do that? Or is you that have a- to be trained in deception. Yep. We'll try that. Trained in deception, and you have to be in melee. Cool. Good to know. It will try to... Tra- nope, it doesn't work. Only rolled a nine on a deception check. Tries to faint and trick poor Zankath, but she's really just too busy flopping around on the greasy ground. She doesn't even notice. Tries to faint and faints. <laughs> mm, mm. No, no, <laughs> no. Nope. Sure. And it tries it to hit you again with a short sword and misses. Yes. So that, that's that Pugwumpy's turn. And now it's Jonesy's turn. MVP. Yeah, Jonesy. <laughs> um, it's been a while since Jonesy was um, thrown to the ground and covered in grease. Um, but he's wondering <laughs> if... Zankath will need to make some sort of check in order to get up. She will. She can step or crawl without any penalty. Yep. She can step or crawl. So you could, she can take a five-foot step with no penalty. She can crawl with no penalty. If you want to stand up or move, you have to make another check. Okay. I will cast Guidance on her oh. so that she can use a plus one stat bonus. For her skill check. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and that's only until the start of my next turn. And so that's one action point. And then for my other one, I will cast Fire Ray on this bigger guy who I think cast the unlucky thing. Unless that was one of the Pugwampies. Which one did the unlucky... It's just an aura that the nasty little dog things have. It's just have. an aura, yeah. yeah. I guess I wouldn't know that anyways, so Jonesy wouldn't be aware. Yeah, I'll just cast Fire Ray on the bigger guy. Okay. For a 23 to hit. Oh, man, Jonesy is dangerous with that thing. Yeah, so a 23 to hit, you succeed. Yeah. Uh, that is a solid hit. Roll your damage. Eight points of damage. Oof. Creature wails in pain. As you singe it. Take take that. No. You cook you, not me. Filthy <laughs> creature. <laughs> cook you for dinner, not cook me for dinner. I'll cook you for dinner. No. Corgo, what do you want to do? Mm, Corgo's 30 feet away, so he's going to use two movements just to get over in range. So as he w- walks over two actions, two stride actions closer, he sees Zankus on the ground, and she doesn't look very hurt. They're like barely poking her like, Zankus, what's going on? They're tickling you? What is this? And then he reaches down and tries to pick the thing up by its hair. Make a saving throw, a will save. I ref- no. <laughs> With I disadvantage, as they say. No, that's not in this game. Misfortune. <laughs> it is now. Misfortune. One. I can't see the results yet. I'm rolling again. Two. Oh. No. All right. I'm unlucky. Yeah, I'm afraid that poor Corgo has failed and therefore is also unlucky. So all your attacks and saving throws and skill checks must be made with misfortune until something changes. Fine. <laughs> Can I do this keep lower thing? Is that too? Is that a? Is that a disadvantage? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? When you go to roll something, it says normal. Keep higher. Keep lower. Uh, yeah. What does so that that's mean? that. Yeah, that's exactly what that's. That automates the roll. Cool. Because yeah. cool, I don't want to roll twice. All right. So making athletics check to grapple. I'm laboring it as grabbing the main there. Oh, only 12. Boop. Uh, overcoming its fortitude DC or reflex? The grapple is reflex. Reflex. 12 does not succeed. Oh, man. I rolled a 15 of 4. Sorry, it is fortitude. Whoops. Fortitude. It doesn't succeed either. All right. That's a, that's all three of his actions. The creature squirms as you try to grab it, and its weird, greasy hair just slips through your fingers. Okay. That is Corgo's turn. And another one of the Pugwampies gets to go, and it is going to move and step up next to Zankath and say, my turn, my turn, and try to hit you. Ooh. Oh, a natural 20. That is a critical. Yes, 28 to hit. All right, here we go. Ooh. What? (laughs) (laughs) 
Wow. Now it's healing you. <laughs> hey, my, my, minus two doubled is negative four, so I get four hit points back? I'm back to full. <laughs> <laughs> you take no damage, I guess? Takes two. Minimum one. Minimum one? Okay, so you take two points of damage. Sean. And it says, ha-ha, take that. Uh, what else can it do? Can it do anything else that's cool? Not really. Nope. Nope, but it can't really do anything else that's cool. With his last action, this Pugwampi is going to uh, take a step back. Zankath, it is now your turn. Okay. I can step, which is a five-foot movement, so I can go anywhere. Uh, so I'm going to step out of the area. Is it an action to stand up? Yes. thought it might be. I'm going to stand up, which removes prone and flat-footed. I'm going to punch the guy beside me, the, the larger the large thing. imp guy. Yeah, you're not sure what that is. Yeah, I'm just going to punch it again because I assume there's a penalty if I'm in melee with a bow. Don't forget you have guidance so you can use that for your attack. Yeah. I don't think there's a penalty, is there? Looking it up. I think... If they can do attacks of opportunity, they can attack you, but otherwise, uh, I think you'd be fine. I'd much rather use my bow. They got rid of all that pesky feet tree to make you take things <laughs> so you can don't get a minus four and all that stupidness. It's gone. Second edition, baby. Those are like laser guns now. Yes. <laughs> Always wanted a laser gun. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I don't see anything about it other than the feet. If you were with a longbow, you'd be taking a penalty. But because you're a shortbow, I think you're okay. Just another perk of the shortbow, man. Don't bring a longbow on adventures. Does the bow have the volley characteristic? It does not. Then, yeah, I don't think there's any penalty for being close. I'm going to pull up my bow and shoot at the little imp guy between me and Gorgo. Ooh. Oh, I yeah. did not get, it did not include the plus one, but with it, it's a 20 to hit. Okay, that is a hit. You shoot your bow at point blank into this weird, greasy-haired, evil-looking creature, and what's the damage? A uh, three. <laughs> All right, turnabout is fair play. You inflict a minor injury, and the creature says, ow! Plus two to that, because you have... Plus two, because I have... Shot. I assumed it would just add that, but it does not. You have not. to drag the stance onto uh, your sheet. I have. I, I've got it on me. I see a little bow on her status yeah. there. Yeah, weird. Uh, so it's actually five damage. Okay. Five points of damage. That's a little bit more painful. Andreas. Andreas will step back and out of the grease um, and then is going to... No, you know what? Before I move, I will use my Conflux spell, Thunderous Strike. This uh, So I swing my, my meteor hammer. It hits the ground, creating a sonic vibration out. Cool. So I make a melee strike with my weapon, hitting this first guy. Each creature in a 15-foot cone from me then must then make a fortitude save or take damage. And if they critically fail, they'll fall prone. So I'll start with the attack against this closest Pugwampi. And I am rolling twice, keeping the lower... Ooh, I rolled really well. That's a 24 to hit. Definitely a hit. That is five points of bludgeoning damage. Minimum damage. Yeah. And then I need both of those Pugwampies to roll me... Yeah, to make fortitude save. A basic fortitude save. All right, the first one got a 17. The second one got a 10. 10 is a fail, so he will take two points of damage, and the one that succeeded takes just one point of damage. All right. And then I'll step, and then I'm going to cast, and then I'm going to uh, summon my Arcane Cascade, which just gives me some temp hit points and some bonus damage later. Okay. Wow. All right. That's a good turn. And now the Hadrosaurid is going to go, and it moves in a random direction. Uh -huh. It moves 10 feet south, paying absolutely no attention to this combat that's going on. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> the weird creature uh, is going to start with a five-foot step and then is going to... Can I do anything cool? Oh, let's be mean. I'm going to be mean. Sure. Oh, no. That's even... Oh, goodness. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> that's even better. Okay. I was, I'm going to do something that's mean, but in not in the cruel way, just in the effective kind of way. So I'm going to make a melee spell attack. Good old shocking grasp. Oh, no. oh. 
only a 10 to hit. That is a miss. Yep, it misses. It says, curses! What a shocking development. <laughs> this is not going your way. <laughs> One of the Pogwampies. It drops the short sword that it has and as an action pulls out a bow and takes a shot at Andreas with the bow. 16 to hit is a miss. a miss. And I might as well use a third action to try another shot. Not going to work. But, oh, my, okay. Well, maybe oh. it is. A 22 is a hit. It is. And you take, guess how much? One point of damage. Oh, good thing I cast Arcane Cascade on myself. <laughs> okay. Jonesy, it is your turn. Jonesy will move 15, no, 20 feet up. And. Uh oh. Jonesy, make two will no. saves. I was trying to stay away. Okay. <laughs> 17 and. Oh, wait, I'm just rolling randomly? That's not right. Give me a second. <laughs> Uh, Will I, I, I would take those rolls. Yeah, Just they're take pretty those. good. Yeah. Right, 23. Oh, whatever, that's better. <laughs> and an 18. Okay, they both pass. Yeah. You are not afflicted by misfortune. Take that mic. I don't want to. Then Jonesy will uh, reach up to the air, cast his awesome divine lance, and shoot it again at the big greasy haired guy. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Natural one. Natural one is just a miss. So the lance goes sailing off into the distance. Yeah, I won't say it freaks out the Hadrosword. I'll Oof. just say it has no effect. Corgo, what do you want to do? Okay, the creature moved away. He's on the north side of the trap. Yep. Corgo, 10 feet, 20, another 10 feet, 25 feet. So Corgo goes on the other side of it. And yeah, buddy. he pushes him in the trap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to straight up tell you that won't work. Oh, no. come on. Oh, it's too small. It's medium or it's, larger it's too small. creatures. It has, to be, it has to be actually large Oh, or larger. Larger, larger. Oh, cause, oh okay. Cause he, he, okay, gotcha. I can yeah, so you a... might want to just move into flanking position instead. Mm, it's a trap for right. big creatures. Yeah. You, you, Corgo knows that that wouldn't work. Oh, man. Cor Corgo looks over. He got so so mad. He gets so mad about the rules of this game. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, goes into a rage over it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and his rage has progressed. So now when he goes into a rage, he, uh, he like, kind of gets down on all fours because it's weird. Ooh. So not only does he smile weird, he goes on all fours. Ed, why do I have so much trouble raging? <laughs> I'm getting angry about this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out if Corgo is able to enter a rage in two weeks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Broken Tusk Rising. You can help the podcast by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, by chatting with us on Discord, and most of all, by supporting us on Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash thehouseofbob. This show is possible due to all our patrons who get special zines, one-shots, episode commentary, and other stuff for supporting the podcast. Art for this episode is by Sean Makes. Audio production and music are by me, Mike Hammock. Thanks for listening, and roll on! Is it you, Jonesy? I don't know, but your typing is so loud, I didn't even hear part of Mike's talk. <laughs> <laughs> this uh this I it looks like I'm going to have to buy I'm going to have to buy a sample set of porcupine noises <laughs> because actual porcupine noises are hilarious. Oh. Yeah? oh. Have you I ever, don't really know oh, man, what porcupine go, side loud. Go watch a video after this of of a of a porcupine making noises. They sound like a human. They really oh, do. Josh, he said after the session. <laughs> Let's yep. watch it now. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> they sound like... Oh, yeah, okay. cool. They're hilarious. Excellent. And I roll it, and it says uh, that. So then I go update it. Oh, boy. Yeah, there's, this is going to take a while. Initiative value. Guys, what's happening? I'm frozen. And then let's roll the last one. I think the I think the directors cut away to a uh, a side a side to story. Perhaps we're seeing right now Frand creeping through the bushes, watching <laughs> the burning mammoths as they uh, uh, haphazardly 
uh, a trained Bacano in their ways. Uh, He's just as obstinate and annoying to them, and they're starting to get tired of him. <laughs> Fran looks on in self-satisfaction. Oh, man, Fran is so awesome. <laughs> His biceps flex for no reason. They just <laughs> <laughs> they're always flex. He's freshly oiled for some reason. <laughs> Oh, Mike, your Pugwampi kind of sounds like the Black Adder in the first season. <laughs> totally. Aha, oh. take that. That's totally <laughs> Black Adder. Sorry. <laughs> it's been so long since I watched that. I just, I barely remember.